Good afternoon, St. Matthews, and welcome into Noon Prayer on this Tuesday of the fifth week of Lent. Wow, next week will be Holy Week. So we're really moving along in our journey to the empty tomb. As we have been practicing during this Lenten season, we will continue with Richard Rohr's Meditations, Wondrous Encounters, Scripture for Lent. Let us enter into God's courts. A reading from the Gospel of John. You belong to what is below. I belong to what is above, Jesus said. You belong to this world, the world which cannot hold me. It can't. Right here, he has in a bracket, handle. Not just hold me, but they just couldn't handle Christ. So they said, who are you? When you lift up the Son of Man, you will gradually realize that I am, ego I me, and that I do nothing by myself. Wow. Spiritual vaccination. <laughs> wow. What a term that's so relevant to our times since COVID. We have all seen the rod of Alcil Asclepius, or its common variation, the Caduceus, on medical insignias throughout the world. You know, it's a cross with a snake on it. It was the symbol of this Greek god of healing, but is also found here in the first reading from the book of Numbers. We didn't get that reading this morning, or excuse me, this afternoon. It is a single or double serpent, serpent winding around a pole. Oh, it's a pole, not a cross. And we are not sure if the Greeks or the Hebrews had it first. But surely the meaning was a universal discovery that today we would perhaps call vaccination. In short, the cause is also the cure. Who would have thought? It seems to be true both medically and psychologically. At any rate, we have Moses prescribing such medicine to the complaining Hebrews in the desert who were being bit by winged fired fiery serpents, ye. For some reason, he tells them to make a bronze version of the saint and put it on a standard, which is perhaps unlikely considering the prohibition against idols. <laughs> but he said, if anyone is bitten and looks on it, they will live. Apparently it worked to, the, to their healing and our embarrassment. The meaning and healing symbol returns again in John's Gospel on many levels, all of them significant. The recurring phrase is the lifted up one, that Christ would have to be lifted up just like on a pole, just like that serpent was, and you would look to that for your salvation, your healing. It has now become a rallying cry for, for the Jesus who was raised up on the cross and thus vaccinated us against doing the same, that is, death. Jesus being lifted up is offered as a healing icon of love to all of history, and finally as a victory sign of the final resurrection and ascension of all the human ones as is prefigured in today's account about the archetypal um, human one, who is Jesus. This is a powerful material, or this is powerful material, just as vaccinations always are. The crucified Jesus is God, at, le at least three-level vaccination plan. That's God's three-level vaccination plan. Number one, against humanity, desire to escape, humanity's desire to scapegoat or kill. Number two, so we could catch a universal and healing love from God, you know, rather than catching a virus. And number three, toward the mutual encounter whereby we know the great I am through our own deepest I am. 
In each case, we have a divine medicine brought down to a small but potent dosage so we can handle it, and it can handle us. This is what true spiritual symbols always do. Remember what we said earlier in Lent. Any direct contact with God is like contact with an electric wire. It burns you unless you have some good filters and a very humble human humanity to receive it. No wonder so many Catholics and Orthodox never tired of hanging images of the crucified Jesus in their homes and in their churches. We needed to lift up and gaze upon the transformative image just as Moses first did in the desert. It can and did and will change many lives and much of history. A prayer. Dear and divine physician, I need all of the medicine you are willing to offer me. Give me what I can handle when I can handle it. And maybe I will let you be the handler. And may I let you be the handler. Amen. Now, continuing with our praying for five, we pray for Stephen and Katie Sewell. We pray for Jeannie Sharp, Joe and Kathy Shelton, Garrett and Ina Smith. All right, dear ones, I look forward to seeing you for Holy Eucharist tomorrow. That will be the last Wednesday before Holy Week. Until then, let us rejoice in the Lord. Amen.